A teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on cold iron. As teachers, we need to respect the three laws of learning. We know that people learn at different speeds, in different ways, and that people require a desire to learn. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to create a desire to learn. It is an excerpt from last year's Tennis Scotland conference in which I presented a modified formula from Extreme Management, The Secrets of Harvard Business School. This one here, DVF, I did that one at the last conference. Who remembers that? See? Repetition is the mother of all skill. It's the same as training. I'm going to go back on it. Okay? This is a core principle to me, uh, in, in my opinion. I, I stole it from the Harvard Business School. Every time I pause, just hoping somebody's thinking, did he go to Harvard? Did anybody think that? You're right, I didn't go to Harvard, I just read the book. Okay, but in the book, uh, this is what they say is the, is the formula for change. And it's very, very powerful. I'd suggest to you that it works on the tennis court, it works in, it could work in all, in all aspects of your life. It's pretty straightforward, really, but it just stands for this. The D is dissatisfaction. Okay? If you're not dissatisfied with the status quo, why would you change? So if you have an athlete who's not buying into that change, maybe they're happy with where it's at. I've been given the example all the time, and what better place to do it now uh, with Andy and his, and his second serve. In a conversation that I had with Judy, uh, when I first had a chance to work with her a couple years ago, she was talking about putting, she, she, had, put, she had told me the story about when Andy was young, getting a video montage put together of his opponents cracking into his second serve. Right? Why did she do that? She was trying to create a level of dissatisfaction in him that my second serve's not good enough. Look, my, my opponents are cracking into it. Okay. Why did he need that dissatisfaction? Why didn't he already have it? Because he beat everybody already, right? The, the, the highest level of dissatisfaction usually comes with losing or something that's not working, but because he's beating everybody, he might not see where that spot is, so she had to be creative and try to find a way to use that dissatisfaction. But that's what I mean when I talk about using facts. A lot of the times, one of the best ways to create dissatisfaction is just that. Do you realize that you won two out of 30 points? I don't know, wouldn't it? that's too much of an exaggeration. That you won 10 out of 30 points on your second serve, okay? You won 33%, okay? And the player goes, really? And then maybe they go, is that bad? And you say, yeah, you know what, it is bad because the best players on tour, and this kind of stuff depends on who you're teaching. You could say the best kids at the, at the Grand Prix tour or the best players on the WTA tour or whatever. But, you know, the best players on tour, for example, are winning much closer to 60%. So that's what I mean by relating it to the goals. So you're taking the facts and relating them to the goals to start creating a dissatisfaction in your player. Is that clear? It's so critical, right? If you think about that in your normal life, okay, what is one of the things that is the fastest trigger to getting somebody in shape? You know, somebody's been unfit their whole life, they get to about 55, this happens, they get in shape. Some kind of a health scare, right? It could be that. They, all of a sudden they go to the doctor and or maybe they even have a problem where they go to the doctor, the doctor says, my gosh, you're in big problems. And they say, man, I'm now dissatisfied with this. This, this. this weight thing was a bit of an issue before with my vanity. I wish I looked nicer. But now it could kill me. That's a dissatisfaction that's going to drive change. Okay? So as coaches, you have to be a master sometimes at creating dissatisfaction. It sounds funny, but we're going to, t we're, we're going to deal with that on court. Okay? The V stands for your vision. Because there's nothing worse, let's face it, of being dissatisfied with something. I hate where I'm at, but having no vision of what's possible. Okay? So in, in, in fact, I'd even say to you, if you're not somebody who can create a vision, please don't go around creating dissatisfaction. You'll just make people miserable. All right? But you want to be able to be that person then that says, okay, if you don't like it here, look what's possible. And that's that really selling the vision, getting in their heart, all of this kind of stuff. Make sense? Okay. Of course, the missing ingredient, because there's so many people, isn't there? Aren't, aren't there you know, books and books sold by people that have made millions you know, about, about like, making millions? You know those ones? 
you know, the only way these people that are, are millionaires is the fact that, you know, you're buying their stuff on teaching them how to become millionaires, that kind of stuff. Is, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like a very good model, but they're very good writers. They, they kind of tell all these things that drag this thing out of you where you're like, yeah, I'm not satisfied with your life. And they say, this is possible. Dream big. This, 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 this. You say, yeah, 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 yeah. And then two days later, you forgot that and you're moving on in your same old life and this kind of stuff because the F stands for first steps. Okay? That's kind of your action plan. Okay, it's all fine to be dissatisfied. It's all fine to have a vision. But if you don't have a clear-cut action plan of how to get there, nothing's going to change. So if you relate it back to the tennis story, here you go, player. You're only winning 30% of the points on your second serve. 60% is possible. Let's look, video, video, montage video of all of your great second serves that worked. You know, what do you think? They say, yeah, I could do that. Okay, well, look, you know, it's not so easy to do that. It's great that we want it. Now, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set a routine of practicing our serve four times a week. As we're practicing, we're going to have to make sure we're really focused on, you know, whichever it is, these kind of things. So, so that's that laying out the action plan to help them reach their change. Okay?